The NES is famous not just for its great games, but it's equally famous for its awful games. For every Super Mario 3, there are a dozen deadly towers. Well, maybe not that bad, but you know what I mean. There's at least 100 games that are either complete dumpster fire or just mechanically unplayable. For the most part, I'm looking at the dumpster fires, but some of these are also basically unplayable as well. I mean, technically, you could spend required time to overcome the broken mechanics, but really, why? Allow me to show you what I mean. Here are the 10 worst games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Number 10. The Silver Surfer. Oh, here's a common scenario. Oh, what's this? A Silver Surfer game on the NES. Then you begin to think about how mighty and powerful the Silver Surfer is. Wow, what a great character to base a game on, you think. Surfing across the stars is one of the most powerful beings in the universe. Your special silver skin makes you virtually indestructible. You buy the game, pop it into your NES, and in about 10 minutes your entire house has been burnt to the ground, thanks to your uncontrollable rage. After putting less than 10 minutes into the Silver Surfer, I mean they took this super powerful beam that could easily beat Superman and made him oh so weak. If the surfer touches anything or gets hit even once, he dies, and you're going to die a lot. This game isn't fun, it's torture. Stay away! To be honest, if this wasn't starring the surfer, it probably wouldn't be on this list. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's really, really bad. But the, you know, they just did the silver surfer dirty. Lord Gamerson likes the silver surfer. Number 9. Muscle. Muscle men were these cheap little single color figurines released in the 1980s. Lord Gamerson has mixed feelings on these characters. On the one hand, they're cheap and lazy. Tiny little unpainted wrestling figurines that also somehow were kind of charming. These wrestlers have more than two colors in the game. And you know, maybe that's based on the anime, but when you think of muscle, you think of the little toys. So, you know, also, this game is basically like a Tiger handheld. It's upgraded for the NES. I mean, it's not, but it really seems that way. The moveset is really limited, and it's hard to connect with your opponent. The game is just sloppy. Basic moves are very, very difficult to pull off. It's pretty much luck if you even get your character to do what you want. This game is just trash. If you own this game, you bring dishonor to your house. To give it away or sell it isn't ethical. The best tool is fire. But remember, be careful with your fire. And if you're a child, get somebody older to burn the game for you. Somebody who knows what they're doing with fire. Number 8. Back to the Future. Back to the Future is one of the greatest movies ever made. Back to the Future is also one of the worst games ever made. It makes one think that the developers just didn't have the time or movie detail. You know, the reason most movie games suck. This game came out in 1989, that's four years after the movie. Lord Gamerson has seen this kind of thing before. While I don't know if this applies directly to Back to the Future on the NES, sometimes someone will spend a lot of money on a license. They need something quick to recoup the loss. They look for something that's almost finished but abandoned. Then they slap their license on it, finish the stinky turd until it's borderline playable and rush it out the door. Is this what happened to Back to the Future? I don't know. Either way, this game is an insult to the license. Number 7. Where's Waldo? The question you should ask isn't where's Waldo, but where's the money you paid for this bowel draining puke spewing piece of crap? You get 8 levels to find Waldo in. 
What the levels are don't matter because you enter one and the whole thing is just a randomish collection of sprites and you have to pick the one sprite that you think may be Waldo. You could be staring right at Waldo and only suspect that is what you are looking at. Then there's the medium and hard difficulty. Waldo changes colors. Why? Why, why did they think this was a good idea? This is one of the laziest cash grabs. Lord Gameson has never seen anything like this. I mean, come on. At least the other games on this list gave you something they didn't even bother trying to realize the scene. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Number six, Dragon's Lair. Oh, cool. Dragon's Lair on NES, you might have thought. Back in 1990, walking through a Kmart with your parents. After all, you saw Dragon Slayer in the arcade and it looked awesome. With its cartoon-like visuals, you would love to own it on the Nintendo. You beg your parents for months, and they finally relent, but only after you mow the grass for a month or two. You go back to the Kmart, money in one hand, and your hopes and dreams in the other. Then they're all sold out. Oh. But the clerk makes some phone calls, and a Kmart on the other side of the city still has about four copies. You once again lower yourself to the act of begging. Please, Mum and Dad, please take me to the faraway Kmart. Dad grumbles a bit, but he says okay. Then you get your game. You go home and put it in the NES, and then... Dragon's Lair is clinical depression in a box. Number 5. Uncanny X-Men Welcome friends and check out the tragedy of LJN's X-Men. See the world's greatest heroes become reduced to weak, ineffective idiots. Marvel at the graphics so terrible they will make your eyes bleed. Witness the man who actually finished the game with sanity intact. Is LGN's Uncanny X-Men the worst superhero game ever made? Yes, my friends. Yes, it is. In that respect, in a weird way, that makes this game somewhat interesting. I mean, even Superman 64 can say it, it was at least better than this. Oh boy. You can choose between six X-Men. It doesn't matter who you pick, you'll be dead within a minute. If you manage to persevere and get good, your sanity will deteriorate. When this game came out, mental health institutes were over capacity. It's hard to hit the enemies, but the enemies have no trouble hitting you. You'll get stuck in the environments. The graphics are so ugly and the music is vile. This game hurts my soul. Number 4. Back to the Future Parts 2 and 3 Back to the Future Parts 2 and 3 did have potential. In the hands of not LJN, this game might have been good. In Back to the Future, you can travel between 1955, 1985, and 2015. You need to do things from one time period which affects things in the next can do this by unlocking time doors. You open the doors by getting keys. The keys are obtained by killing enemies. You need to complete minigames after opening the doors. These minigames are the arguably the best part of the game. They're not really good. They're, they're okay. Kind of enjoyable from time to time. Then you need to find the proper item and bring it back to the right time period. The place where you bring the item is hidden. 
and there are others like it, so hopefully you get to the right room. You pick the item from the item grid. It's not always easy to tell what the items are. If you pick some item, if you pick it wrong, it explodes, and you need to go back and get it. You do this about 30 times and you win. It doesn't sound that bad, right? Well, we're dealing with LGN. Right away, you have no idea what's going on. The game is very, very cryptic. The gameplay is vomit-inducing. The graphics are passable and the music is pretty good. But this game... This game is the reason why tedious... Why the word tedious exists. They had some good ideas, but they forgot one important thing. Fun. In Back to the Future 3, it's very similar for to 2, except you don't travel between time periods. You stay in the Wild West, and it still sucks. This game sucks. Number 3. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. If you haven't seen it, I suggest watching the Angry Video Game Nerds review and re-review of this game. He really perfectly nails the horror of playing the game. The goal is to get Jekyll to his wedding. I don't know why this needs to be so hard. Everybody wants to kill Jekyll. It seems the whole town hates him. With this amount of hate going on, you would think his wedding would be pointless, because by the time he would get to his wedding, the whole town mob would have killed his bride. Do you think they would have let her live when she is so deeply connected to the man whom they all hate so much? Oh, but I suppose we need to assume she's fine and everybody just hates Jekyll. Jekyll can't really attack anything. He absorbs hits until you turn into Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde takes the same path as Jekyll, but in reverse. You need to refill Jekyll's stress meter. It's the stress meter which turns him into Hyde in the first place, you see. But, um, you know, you can't actually get past the point where you started. Because at that point, you turn back into Jekyll. And you keep on going and getting hit and hit by everybody and everything. Everything hates Jekyll. And yes, yes, that's pretty much the point. But really, you know, there's not too much I can say without rehashing what the nerd has said. So go watch his review. It's probably the best thing you can do if you want to learn more about the crappiness of this game. Number two, Ghostbusters. The first question you may ask, is Ghostbusters on the NES as bad as Ghostbusters 2016? The answer is yes, but not only that, it's much worse. Ghostbusters on the NES will make you hate the Ghostbusters theme, but don't worry, it's not a permanent affliction. You see, this mini mitty theme, it just gets annoying after a while. You, it's the only thing they play. It gets in your head, and it's not that good. You get a very simple hub area with the goal. The Zool building in the center. You eventually have to go there. Your avatar here is the Ghostbusters logo. You know, it could be worse, I suppose. You need to catch ghosts, but not the ghosts on the main screen. Those are going to the Zool building. You need to go to the red flashing buildings and catch some ghosts. However, before you can do any of this, you need to buy your ghost busting equipment at the store. You know, it's weird that this store exists. Who would shop here except for the Ghostbusters? So I guess the Ghostbusters buy all their gear from the neighborhood ghost busting store. You know that happy little mom and pop shop in between a church and a daycare? Yes, so you catch ghosts, and you sell them to someone. Really, who is buying these ghosts, and for what purpose? Each ghost trap can only be used once, so you need to have the money to buy more traps. Oh, and gas. Right, you need to gas up regularly, because that makes games more exciting or something. So you need to do this over and over and over and over, and oh god, this is painful. Eventually, after a long, long time, you can go to the Zool building, and then the staircase, oh god, the staircase. Climb the stairs and dodge the ghosts. This is one of the most difficult things, and it's just not fun. 
Get some ghost bait, it'll help, but why would you do this? Why continue? Just turn it off for the love of God. Life is worth living, don't do this to yourself. There are people that love you. Just turn off this game, please. Number one, Deadly Towers. Play this game at your own risk. These words should have been on the box. Deadly Towers will send you into a journey of madness. If you manage to come out the other side, you will be made better by your journey. Few dare to take the journey, and only a fraction ever really make it out. Their souls forever enslaved by the towers. They will still exist. They will go to work, eat, and sleep, but the spark is gone. That spark forever trapped within the coded world of deadly towers. Trying to hit the enemies is one of the most difficult in gaming feats. Controlling your character is incredibly frustrating. You die. You die a lot just from moving your character. It came from the lowest depths of hell, and its purpose is to trap souls. There are some leeway though. You do get a few hours before the transfer begins. It's basically saying that if you are willing to put more than a few hours into this thing, then you must be one of the truly depraved. And this game also gives you madmen a new home for eternity. Stay away from the Deadly Towers, lest thou become one of the depraved. So there we have it, the 10 worst games on the NES. This list is basically a public service announcement. Never play these games, especially Deadly Towers. Stay away, stay pure, Lord Gamerson loves you.